Hey everyone, D-Dub Squizzy here. Welcome back to Hollow Knight. Alright, so we are in the Queen's Gardens. The goal is to just finish these things out completely today. Well, in this episode. Of course. Fool me once, shame on you. Fool me twice, shame on me. Yeah. I think we still have two more Whispering Roots, and then that should be it. I'm pretty sure. Right, I forgot about these guys. There's another one who's gonna pop up, I know it. Yeah, there he is. They're durable little buggers. The love key's nice to have. With that, we can release a bunch of the other grubs. I'm pretty sure there's a couple here in the Queen's Gardens, but after we get those, the only grubs left are in the tower. Alright, we'll just connect these areas up. I will say, the amount of interconnectivity with Queen's Gardens is astonishing. It's got connections to the fungal waste. Deep Nest, Green Path, Forgotten Crossroads, and Fog Canyon. And it has, like, that one right there we just opened connects both to Fungal Waste and Deep Nest. It, that area is also a connector between those two areas. It's like the, uh, oh, what do you call it? The quintessential optional area of the game. Yeah, and I need 1500 essence in order to get the last uh, vessel fragment. I'm thinking Marmu will give me that much, or at least enough to reach that. Well, Marmu plus the Whispering Roots we're doing definitely will get me enough for that. Then I can go get that. Won't have to worry about doing the, uh... Whoa! Oh. Won't have to worry about doing the White Palace yet. Because I can just go back once I have enough and I've taken out the green bosses. But yeah, once we're done here, we'll be going back there to get the rest of that. Now, that's up to the Stag Station and the rest of the area. This will connect over to Deep Nest. And I just want to get things out here. Right. The uh, the charm I was missing. I didn't look it up because I forgot what to look up. Now I remember. Shape of Un. That's what we're missing. Just to make sure I don't forget it again. Uh, I'm just gonna like... There. Much harder to miss the red ones. Ow. I always find it weird that that, I don't even know what you call those guys, the tiny little ones, that that one isn't hiding anywhere. Like, generally they're hiding underground, and you have to, like, get close, and that lures them out. That one is usually just, like, walking around, though. Yeah, like he is right now. It's weird. Weird. 
I know that those ones are called moss fly, moss creeps. That's what the little ones are called. I like all the structuring that you can see under the place too. See, it's like it all tries to give off a very naturalist feel. That all of this is the way it should be. It's where it's supposed to be. Everything's normal. But then you just scratch beneath the surface a little bit. And you can see how unnatural pretty much all of Hallow Nest is. Unnatural just meaning that's not the way it normally is. Because, of course, even things that are built are natural. last arena in the game. Barring the trader lore, of course. Trader's Grave. We'll deal with that in time. It truly is not as daunting as it seems. So I should go this way first. for anything else. There's like one map to buy. I'm pretty sure that's it. Uh, another source of great mystery. What in the world is this thing? We never know. failed champion. Stole his armor from one of the five knights. And we never know what happened to that knight that he stole it from. Dude could be dead. Might not be, though. But we do have confirmed fates on all the others. One of them dies after the White Flower quest. Dung Defender's still alive and actually doing pretty good for himself. Of course, one is dead up there at the top, and uh, Yzma's long dead. So, three die if you do everything in the game. Two are already dead, one more can die, one is unknown, and one is one's all good. Alright, that unlocks the stag station too, so next time I use a stag I can go to that. Let's just take out Marmu. <laughs> Very uninteresting boss fight. Missed it. But overall, not very difficult. Here we 
we go. Of course, the Loodles respawn. Ow. Oh, get pranked, son. I did not know that reduced your hitboxes. That's cool. Uh, no, yeah, we want to go up. I am shocked I just got through that without taking a hit. Yeah, we're not taking that way. Alright, this has potential to be quite a nightmare. Overall, it isn't that bad, but you do have to work your way back down, so be very... be very sure that, uh, that you're capable of making it through this thing. unlocking one of the most annoying shortcuts in the game. It takes so long to get it. Anything else up here? Yep. the essence you can get without killing uh, dream bosses. Well, they're still Revek, I guess. I haven't taken out Revek yet. And all the ghosts that he guards. If you kill them, you get more, but not, not a lot more. You'll get up around 1600, I think, and it takes 1800 to awaken a dream now. So you have to kill at least one dream boss in order to proceed further. That's kind of an are you worthy gate. Because if you don't have that there is a guaranteed attack you cannot dodge by the Traitor Lord. She's not very useful around here. This guy's only tough, really, because of the environment that you fight him in. You don't have much room to maneuver, but fortunately it isn't that bad. He's really just an over-glorified traitor. That attack, you can't dodge that without the Shade Cloak. Ow. Focus 
focused on the wrong person. Definitely give this knight check here, uh, credit. She fought until the bitter end and took a lot of them with her. I don't understand why those things were trying to reach the white lady, though. Pretty sure she isn't worth anything to them. Hey, Zuma Kong Kong. Thank you. Half of what we need. It's gonna be a bit before we get the other half, too. But fortunately, we can start clearing out smaller things. Since we finished out this place. First things first, I need to go get Shape of Oon before I forget, though. That's probably heresy to do anyway. Let's be real, though, who wants to be stuck in that one little room with the dead traitor lord and your own carcass for eternity? Because that's what her fate was. I don't know how you get her to, uh, to dirt mouth then. I know that she can go there, at least I'm pretty sure she can. But I didn't talk to her in any of her destinations, and I completely skipped her uh, deep nest one. But she was still there. Right, we can go to the stag nest real quick as well. And that's actually pretty close to, uh, to the shape of Boon. So we can run down and grab that right after. There's a vessel fragment here. Yep. Last one of those is from the seer. Which leaves two mask shards? Yeah. Maybe she gives you a mask shard and you get a vessel fragment from Grubfather? I can't remember. Because I have one mask shard to get from, uh... What's she called? The Grey Mourner. Which should only leave me with one other. I'm not sure. We'll see. I'm gonna get everything anyway. We're gonna go out as far as we can. Groundy poundy. Bam! Of course, that one is always in just the right place, isn't it? This is one of those places where the game really can't decide if I'm in Green Path or the Howling Cliffs. Now it knows. Very weird looking place. Pretty cool though that they let you meet Moon. Whoops, oh I missed.
Alright, over to the resting grounds. Like I said, I'm not going to take on Revec until after I have Lifeblood Core. I can't remember its exact function because it's not a super useful charm, but it has its functions against against Revec, and I just want to max out my health as well. So, I'll be back for him once I come back with all the essence to awaken the dream Arcane Egg. Ah, okay, it's a Mask Shark. So at least one Vessel Fragment. And then, of course, the Mask Shark from the Grey Mortar. Which we might as well do. Honestly, I'm over here. I don't want to talk yet. Alright, so I need to set the path. First things first, clear out all the enemies on the way to the grave. All the enemies who don't respawn. Minimize the risk of getting hit as much as possible. Of course, don't have to worry about acid, because I have these missed here. Missed it. Nope. inhabited now. I like how the Hunter's Journal when talking about these guys, it's like, imagine how weak you have to be if getting completely taken over by a hostile, volatile infection makes you a stronger warrior. Wait a minute. Did I never clear this place out? That's the vessel fragment I'm missing. I knew I was missing something. I never unlocked the, uh... The elevator from the City of Tears. I gotta do that, too. Alright. Well, I don't need it to do this, though. Missed it. Whoa, it's right next to me! I did not even notice where its body was. Hey, no harm, no foul. I know there are some other routes some people take, but this is my chosen one. Ooh. Honestly, the riskiest part of it is just the platforming to get into the, uh, the grave itself, always, for me. Because you make one false move at that point, you lose the flower. Little ones don't make a difference, but killing off all these Umas definitely a good call. And, uh, is it the bottom one you want to go to? Yes. All the way down at the bottom. Ah, uh, thought I could catch him on that second one there. Say that, babe.
sound in the fog can, you can really mess with your head. Does it make it all muffled? Constantly gotta remind yourself that you're in no hurry while going through this. I don't have the flower yet, so it's not going to be a risk, but best to train now. I can't remember if those respawn on their own or not. Alright, well that's all of them. For some reason, dream gating destroys the flower. I don't even know how that would work. I don't plan on giving this flower to the elder bug, just so everyone knows. I'm not even sure how you give it to the god seeker, because I thought the god seeker was unconscious. Maybe you give it to the one inside, but I don't know where it is inside the dream. I know those are the only two that'll take it, though. There's Coral Blade. Forever rest in the blue lake. Never explained what happens to him either. But from the sound of it, he's very old, which means he probably died somewhere. That'd be my assumption. I'd say he's earned his rest. He never uh, succumbed to the infection. And he's been alive for a very long time. The story always kind of reminded me of uh, what they did with Smokescreen in Transformers Prime. The apprentice of that lore keeper dude with all the artifacts. I can't remember his name. I'm, I'm a Transformers lore nerd, but I can't... Uh, what was that guy's name? Oh well, it, it'll come to me at some inconvenient time. But he was that dude's apprentice, and in Transformers Prime they had those keys that were the ways to open up a machine that could restore their planet. And there were four of them, and one of them was hidden inside of him. Like, they, they couldn't trust anyone else with them, and so he knocked him out and, uh, planted one inside of him. It's kinda, it's not really the same thing, but it sort of reminds me of the way Quarrel's thing works. Except I'm pretty sure Quarrel was compliant with his uh, task in all of this. And I don't think Smokescreen was. This is a very risky area here. I've lost the second most times going through it. The most is in the actual grave room itself, because it's covered in spikes. Don't crystal dash if you can help it. Especially in a dangerous area like this, because there's things like that that are just waiting for you. But see, on the off chance I fail, I really don't want to have to walk all the way back, or worse, clear out the entire route again. And so, I really advise you never attempt to do this quest until you have uh, Dream Gate. Because it is a nightmare to do it without Dream Gate. Assuming you fail. Alright. We 
made it. All right. Be happy, ghost. You're the one that evaded my nail. <laughs> Leaves us with only two actually permanent upgrades left to get. One more charm notch, and one more vessel fragment. The vessel fragment we're going to get in this episode, so I have three more stops to make. I'm going to head back to Dirt Mouth real quick. And that's just so I can uh, feel my completionist nature uh, happy. I'm going to get the last map. I'm pretty sure I don't have anything else I need. After that, I'm gonna go kill the Collector, and free the rest of the Grubs, and then I think that should be all of them, uh, but we'll see. And then I'm gonna get go head over to the other big elevator, open that up, and get the last Vessel Fragment from it. I can't believe I totally spaced on that thing. I kept on seeing that empty place next to the, the city storerooms and thinking, huh, I wonder what that's about. Ah, <sighs> Bacchanada. So we should go to the storerooms one first. It's closer, and it's best to have all the upgrades. Because I'm going in to fight a boss. The collector's not really a challenge, though. But, you know, best to be prepared anyway. I missed something down here, didn't I? I think it's just some geo rocks, but I'm pretty sure there's another thing to loot. Yep. Just one geo rock. need the geo anyway, but now I have it. Alright, back down. So, once we deal with the Collector, right, we still have the Coliseum to do. Grim. Grim is what we'll be doing the first thing next episode, I think. We'll just go through, do all of Grim's stuff, finish up his DLC, and get the Charm Notch from it. Once I'm done with Grim, we'll head over to the Coliseum and do that. Then deal with dream bosses. But I'm going down for the Lost Kin, I'll get, uh, Lifeblood Core as well. Wait a second, what am I doing over here? Wrong place. I'm supposed to drop down. I'm not going for some ass dead. Then, of course, once I've taken out all the dream bosses, I'll go back to the Seer, wipe out the, uh, the Spirit's Glade. <laughs> After I'm done with Spirit's Blade, I'll go over to White Palace. And I'm pretty sure once I do White Palace, that'll be the last thing. Before heading into Godmaster, of course. But first, I want to make sure I get all the grubs. And if, 
pretty sure the last ones are, are in the collector's place. Uh, if that's the case, I will not be... I'll just be going over and collecting my rewards in this episode as well. I also advise not going after the collector until you have a pretty upgraded nail. Because, uh, upgraded nail lets you one shot his minions. Collector's not really that bad. His base, he only has one attack, other than throwing his minions at you, which are weak enemies to begin with. His only means of attacking is to jump at you, and you can literally walk under the jump. Alright, is that all of them now? Still have that key, but that's for Godmaster, of course. I think that's all the grubs. We'll take a quick sweep. Thank you. Uh, yep, yep, looks like that's all of them. All right. Last thing, we're gonna head back to the stag station, pick up Grubberfly's elegy, and uh, we'll end it after that. So first thing next episode, we're dealing with Grim. Just gonna go through, do his entire quest line, and knock that out. Once I get that last charm notch, I'll be putting on a uh, fragile heart. Because heart is super useful for me. I don't particularly need it right now. It does afford some extra bonuses against dream bosses, of course. And it is part of my basic charm setup for Godmaster. I still need to get some Lubric Blessing as well. And I think... Yeah, I still need Lifeblood Core and, of course, the... King Soul or Void Heart. I don't think a single fragment counts. So, I'll get that nearer to the end. Maybe it's a king's idol. King's idol. And rubber flies elegy. Sort of a useless charm. If it was just it extends your range, then it'd be useful. But the fact that it's only when you're full health is just freaking stupid. I don't know who thought that was a good qualifier for it, but it's dumb. And should not at all be the way that charm works. Makes it close to useless, because you take one tiny little hit, and its only effect is completely nullified. And it takes up three notches! Ranting a bit, but that's one of my few gripes against the game. Alright, so that's it for this episode. Hold up. How many notches does Stupid Grimchild take? Is it two? It's two. I mean, I could. 
but that probably is a bad idea. Yeah, we're just gonna, we're gonna take that off. I'm gonna go without Quick Slash to kill the couple other things. Once I get the next Charm Notch, I don't have to worry about it. Actually, no, better idea. We all have Long Nail instead of Market Pride. It's not as good, but it's at least, it's a little better than normal. All right, that's where we'll leave this one. Pick, pick up in the next episode, we'll be doing the Grim Troop.